Hi everyone, this is Maria Lawton, and I'm also the host of Maria's Portuguese Table on PBS. And for all of you out there that keep sending me messages about making breads without yeast, I've got an oldie but a goodie. It was something that my mom would make almost every Friday or Saturday. It would go along with our fish, our boiled dinner, or really just about anything. And it is called Boule de Sertão. Now, Sertão, I have to tell you, is the vessel that it's cooked in. So back in the old country, you would have these vessels where the bread would be cooked in wood-fired ovens. So that is why it's called Boule de Sertão. Well, I have this now because I was able to find one here locally at a Portuguese market. But when I was in San Miguel this past uh, November and I cooked with my cousins, we actually used their vessel that they have used for years and years and it was charred black. That's how it gets after it's been in the oven for so many years. And um, But I wanted to show you exactly why it's called that. It is not the name of the bread. It is because it's it's named after the vessel it's cooked in. So, boule de sirtan. So, very easy. No yeast is used. And what I have here today is simple as this. One cup of corn flour, three tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one to one and a half cups of boiling water, and you can see all the steam coming from it because I just finished boiling it, and then one half cup of all-purpose flour, and then one teaspoon of baking powder. That's the ingredients. We want to take the one cup of the corn flour, and we're going to whisk together the salt, which I said one, tea one teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of sugar, okay? And we're going to whisk this together to get it nicely mixed. And then once that's mixed well, we're going to start adding the boiled water. Now the reason why we add the boiled water is because it'll help dissolve a little bit of the corn flour, which is not as smooth as all-purpose flour. Plus, it thickens the flour. So what you do, now I've got here a cup and a half. Sometimes for whatever reason, a cup is enough. Sometimes a half a cup. So that's why I say a one to one and a half. So we'll see by mixing how it all comes together. Okay, so little by little, you start mixing. the flour along with the boiling water. I don't like to do everything all at once because I don't want it to become complete mush here, but it needs to dissolve the flour. And, um, and you want to do that, trust me, you, you want to make sure you do that. It makes a big difference when making this, okay? Now also, depending on the manufacturer of the corn flour. Some are a little bit thicker, some are a little bit thinner. So as you can see, I didn't even use a full cup on this and it is already the right consistency. So isn't that funny? It truly is. You, you've got to kind of feel through it. It's one of those recipes that you really can't like say for sure this is the amount because again, like I said, process differently. Everybody processes it differently. So then what you're going to add to this now is you're going to add that half cup of the all-purpose flour with the baking powder. And you're going to whisk that together as well. And then it's as simple as now mixing it in with the corn flour. Okay. And once this is done, once I finish mixing all of this together, I am, um, I should have said in the beginning, I'm making a half batch. This recipe is in my cookbook. And, um, and in the cookbook, I use a double of all this amount. But today I'm just making a half batch um, just to show you how easy 
this is and how it can be done. And instead of making like four bulos, you're going to be making for, for my husband and I. I just need two. And um, see, and how all of a sudden the dough has come together. Look at this. And it's still soft. It's still a soft dough. And now what you want to do, because of course we're not going to use it in a wood-fired oven today. Uh, today we're going to be using it here and making it in a cast iron skillet. So what we're going to do is I am going to now just break these, like the, the little dough ball here in half. And I'm going to use some flour, some extra flour in my hands. And I am going to make the tubulos. And then what's going to happen is, is we're going to um, form the bulu size that you want. No, it's not sticking to my hand or anything. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna form the bulu, and then after, oh, little sticky. Um, and then after we form the bulu, we're going to let it rest. So here it is. There's the, there's one bulu we're gonna make here. Spread it out a little bit more. Now, granted, my mom would probably have made one large bulu with us and then break it in half. But I kind of like making my own individual bulos. So, you know, it really is up to you on what you want to do. Um, there's no right or wrong here, folks. But this was something my mom, my mom would make every, almost every week. And what would happen is, is we would have this, um, like I said before, we would have this with our fish on Friday. And we would also have it with our, um, or what do you call it, when she would make um, some, oh my goodness, I can't speak today. When she was making her cozido, she would make some of this. And, uh, and then we would have my dad, it would be one of my dad's favorites. So she would make it and would have uh, the boules made, the boules thumb made uh, for us to eat along with it. So now what we're gonna do after this, we're gonna let it rest, okay? Uh, I like to rest it for a good, oh, 10, 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do is I am going to tap these down a little bit more um, and then cover it up with a dishcloth and clean up. We're gonna wait for a good 10, 15 minutes and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna cook the bouloche. It's been about 15 minutes now and it's been covered here. I've turned on my, um, my portable skillet here and I'm using like I said the cast iron with no grease it might look like it's greasy but my pans are seasoned so they're always looking a little bit greasy but that's the way you want your cast iron if you don't have a cast iron pan you can always use the electric um, griddle and I have about 300 degrees right now so it's it's heating up really nice and so if I show you this here see it just kind of puffed up a little and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're going to put it in the pan with no oil, no grease, just flour, okay? And this usually takes, because I didn't make it very thick, um, it'll probably take less than the 15 minutes it usually does to cook it through. And I always have my little cake tester to see, and that's the best way to see it, because the top and the bottom could get all nice and rosy, but if you go in and it comes out, you know, wet, you need a little bit more time. So let's see how long this one will take. But this is all you do, and you just wait. You wait till it gets cooked through, okay? No. I mean, you know, the, the memory I have of this, like I said before, would be either every Friday night or Saturday for either a lunch or a dinner, depending on what my mom was making, especially when she had fish. We would always have like bulstan to go with it. And uh, like I said, this is a very small looking bulu, but I wanna just show you how exactly, how easy it is to make it. Um, you know, the memories I, I have of all of us, you know, having a bulu and 
you know, breaking it in half and taking it because it gets crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside, you know, and dunking it into like some gravy, some time of sort. And, um, or if my mom was baking it, um, to go with, um, you know, her boiled dinner, you know, I liked it going in, in that with that too. It was really yummy. See, and as you see, whoops, let me flip this over. It's starting to, um, to get crispy all over the top. I know you're thinking it almost looks like a pancake, Maria. Mm, yeah, no, it's not. It's not a pancake. Uh, but I made it small enough so that we could see how, you know, to flip it back and forth for you being easier. Whereas when it was made in a wood fired oven, it got toasted on top by the oven as well as by the bottom. So there was no need to flip it around, but you do what we have to do just to keep up these traditions. And if I have to make it in a skillet like this and flip it around to do it, then I'm gonna be doing it. But the flavor will be really incredible, really incredible. And for those who haven't had it for a very long time, it brings back wonderful childhood memories. It really does, for me it does. And that's what food does, you know? Food kinda keeps us together binds the family together and um, and I am like looking forward to having my family surround my table as you can see the table behind me uh, I like to have all my family together and breaking bread so what, what's better than that there really isn't it's been 15 minutes and that's usually roughly what it takes, a good 10, 15 minutes. So you gotta have, be patient with this. Um, and like I said before, usually my mom would make one large one. So today I'm making two, it makes it easier for me to make one for me, one for my husband, and then it's all to myself. You know, I'm being a little selfish here. Um, so, and not sharing my bulu. Um, but it's 15 minutes, I took my little taste of my little cake tester I put it in it's coming out all dry so this is done so and as you can see we've got a little bit of charring going on here but this is perfect okay so as we're done with now this one we're going to do the other and um and this should probably try to tap it down even more so it'll be faster. The thicker it is, the more time it'll take to cook. The, the thinner the bulu is, the faster, obviously. So this is gonna go in. So now, you know, I have my second one now going here. And what I wanted to show you, we're not gonna do a whole other 15 minutes to show you how this is done. We already showed that to you. Um, but what I do wanna show you is the bulu itself when it's done, okay? And let me tell you, it's still so nice and warm here. This is how it comes up. Oh my God. It's so good. It's the taste of the corn flour that's in there that makes the whole difference. And, oh my, you know, it's such wonderful childhood memories right here. And knowing that we can make this bread with no yeast, a little bit of corn flour, a little bit of all-purpose flour, a little bit of sugar, salt, and baking powder, and this is what you get. Um, I'm going to go and enjoy this, and um, I think I'm going to enjoy it before Bob gets to see this, and, I'll, and then he'll get to enjoy the other, but for now, I hope all of you get to make this. Truly, it's an old recipe that we need to preserve and keep it forward and teaching our children the way that our ancestors ate and what they cooked. And that's really so important right now, more than ever, to pass down our traditions. So, bye-bye. See you. Beijing.